Pal World came onto the scene guns blazing with its take on the monster collecting genre. Dubbed Pokemon with Guns, how did this game become such a global phenomenon? From development, gameplay, easter eggs, and some controversy surrounding the game, we have something for fans new and old in 107 Facts About Pal World. Let's get started. Number 1. Pal World was developed by Pocket Pair, a Japanese video game developer. Their other known popular game is Craftopia, an open world survival game with crafting mechanics. Number 2. Pal World was first announced way back in 2021 during the Indie Live Expo event. For those of you that are curious, the game looked very different from the final product. Number 3. Despite Indie Live Expo being an event geared towards the Japanese audience, the trailer blew up worldwide. Initial reactions to the announcement were filled with memes. My personal favorite is Finally, the much anticipated Pokemon Gun, complete with a logo akin to the Pokemon Sword and Shield logo. Number four. So, what exactly is different from the final game? Well, in the announcement trailer, about eight seconds into the trailer, we see our first missing pal, the white and blue flying pal seen alongside the player. This pal looks similar to another pal that's in the game's code, but is currently not in the game. But more on that later. Number five. 11 seconds into the trailer, we see that there was once an ability to attach a cart to pals and use it for transportation. Number six. 13 seconds in, we see an Akira bike slide reference. It's not a feature, I just like Akira bike slide references. Number seven. Later in the trailer, we see that the building mechanics were very different as well, with what looks like pengolets stacked up on top of each other, helping carry material while the player character is building bits and pieces of a house with said material. Number eight, a minute into the trailer, we see the player character shoot off a rocket and destroy a building. The building's destruction looks physics-based, so at one point there was the idea of destructible environments. Number nine, lastly, in the thumbnail for the PAL World announcement trailer, we see a light blue and white chipmunk looking PAL, which isn't seen in the current version of the game. Game. Number 10. One of the main reasons the announcement looks drastically different, like from a literal aesthetic sense, from the early access version, is that developers switched from working in Unity to working in the Unreal Engine. For additional context, Unity was the engine used for Craftopia as well, so it was probably something that the team felt comfortable using. Number 11. According to the Pocket Pair CEO, Takuro Mizobe, this version of Power World was built in Unity over the course of three months with a five-person team. Number 12. Mizobe stated that one of the reasons that they moved over to Unreal was that it had all the basic things for an open world game, and that he, quote, found it to be more suitable for a comparatively heavy game. Number 13. While we don't get to play Power World's original version, there's a lot that CEO Mizobe reveals about the development of that version that can be found on a long blog post he posted on Note.com. This section is about to get a bit technical, so bear with me. Number 14. In this blog post, it's revealed that a lot of the assets that were used in the announcement trailer were store-bought assets. Number 15. Right before the team had released the announcement trailer for Pal World, Mizobe had received an email from someone named Matsutani. This person was a freelance engineer with 10 years of experience and had expressed interest in working with Mizobe. Number 16. When they spoke, Mizobe realized that Matsutani had a level of technical knowledge that would likely put him at the level of lead engineer. However, he didn't have experience in Unity. Mizobe had three choices, or hire Matsutani and recreate PAL World from scratch using Unreal. In the end, Mizobe chose the third option, which is probably the most difficult option. Number 17. The transition from Unity to Unreal had a lot of difficulties for the team. For one, the animations and assets that were bought for Unity were very dependent on Unity and its animation system, meaning that they had to be scrapped when they transitioned to Unreal since they couldn't use it anymore. Number 18. Speaking of animations, the team at Pocket Pair created over 100 monsters. However, there wasn't a single person at Pocket Pair that had any sort of experience with motion. They eventually found Adachi, a veteran motion designer who was interested in the company after seeing Craftopia. Adachi was appalled by the state of things at the company. It hadn't created rigs for their monsters, so Adachi found a way to mass produce motion for all pals. And when I mean mass produce, I, I mean he like made the process for it. He didn't have a one size fits all solution. They had to rig the monsters and create custom animations for them. Number 19. About six months after the announcement trailer, the main trailer revealed in 2022 shows a much more realized PAL world closer to the final version. However, there were still some key features in the trailer not available in the current version of PAL world. Whether or not these were cut is still up in the air since PAL world is currently in early access. The features are as follows. Number 20. Around 11 seconds into the trailer, we see a modern town in the distance, complete with power 
generating windmills. Number 21. In this same shot, you can see a white, almost snake-like pal flying in the distance. This pal is currently missing from the game. Number 22. There seems to be full-blown vehicles planned for the game, as seen with our player character in the trailer riding on the back of a pickup truck. Number 23. In that same scene, we also see the character using a lasso tool and grabbing onto a rush roar that's chasing the truck. Number 24. The first trailer also shows pals building a rocket, which isn't seen yet in the current version of Pal World. Number 25. About halfway through the trailer, we see the player character riding on top of a giant flying whale-like pal, flying towards a floating Greco-Roman-like city in the sky, complete with floating islands. Number 26. A facility is shown where members are experimenting on pals and forcing them to work in terrible working conditions. It seems like in this version of Pal World, you were able to raid these facilities and free pals, similar to how you could free them from cages in the current version of the game. Number 27. Lastly, while not too sure if this is a pre-rendered cutscene to show off that pals can fight, or if they plan for this feature to be in the game, but there seems to be a coliseum where pals can have proper battles. Number 28. Going back to development, according to Mizobe, Pal World started off really small, with about 25 characters created at the time, and with anticipated development time set to one year. At first, they were only developing promotional videos for Pal World, kind of like conceptual videos to show off the features, kind of like a litmus test to see if people actually like the game. Because the trailer was a hit, development ballooned, and then 100 monsters were created for the game. Number 29. Mizobe estimates that the cost of game development is at 1 billion yen, which is about 6.6 .6 million dollars with current exchange rates. Number 30. Despite everything, however, Pal World was released on January 19th, 2024, through early access on Steam and Xbox Game Preview. Number 31. Anyway, let's talk about gameplay. For those of you that haven't played the game and are genuinely curious, gameplay is a mishmash of several different types of games, from Pokemon to survival craft games like Minecraft and even Breath of the Wild. Number 32. To put it in official terms, to CEO Mizobe, Pal World is a survival craft game with monster capture and taming elements. Number 33. Pal World isn't just a single player experience. Like other survival games, Pal World can be played with friends in four player co op, but servers can hold up to 32 players, and yes, it's just as chaotic as it would seem. Like, I just saw a video of 32 players taking on a boss with fists. Number 34. So, what are the pals in Pal World anyway? Pals are the creatures in Pal World, and they can be captured to help the player whether they do it willingly or by force. Number 35. The term pal, at least in game, was coined by the castaway, which is an in game lore character. His observations can be read in the many castaway journal entries found scattered around the map. Number 36. According to the castaway, pals have their own life cycle, their own means of reproduction, and their own means of dying where their bodies don't decompose and simply vanish. Number 37. Unlike its inspiration, Pal World's pals don't evolve. Instead, a way to power up certain pals is by taking the essence of pals of the same species and condensing them, or sacrificing them basically. It's kind of like in gacha games where you combine some of the character cards you have to bump it up a few stars, except in this game you're sacrificing the pals you can actually see and uh, sending them to oblivion. Anyway, number 38. While evolving doesn't exist, breeding does. According to the castaway, all there needs to be for breeding is the existence of a male and female pair, and with some time, an egg simply appears. Number 39. Other than just breeding the same species, pals can take part in interspecies breeding, which creates a fusion. The fusion doesn't create a pal that looks like a 50-50 split of the two pals. Instead, it creates a subspecies of one of the pals with a different element. Number 40. The typical subspecies of pals have the indicators Christ, Ignis, Terra, Aqua, Botan, Lux, and Noct, which in elemental terms means ice, fire, ground, water, grass, electric, and dark, respectively. Number 41. The subspecies naming convention borrows heavily from Latin and Greek. Christ, Ignis, Lux, Noct, Terra, and Aqua are Latin for crystal, fire, light, of the night, earth, and water respectively. Botan, on the other hand, borrows from Greek and means plant or grass. Number 42. Fusions aren't limited to breeding, they can actually be found and caught in the wild, or hatched in eggs found in the wild. Number 43. One of the first things you learn when leaving the plateau of beginning, which is the starting area when you first open up the game, is that pals apparently eat people. Pals have also been seen in trailers and in-game eating other pals as well. There's this animation that shows for certain pals where they're just like chomping on the ground but then pals disappear, so it can be assumed that pals are eating pals. Number 44. There are also giant pals that you'll encounter in the overworld. These are called alpha pals, and they are larger than normal pals and are considered overworld bosses. Number 45. 
The Palgos Islands, which we'll talk about in a few, also feature dungeons, and dungeons can feature boss level pals hidden within. Alpha pals can also be found in these special dungeons, which are called sealed realms, and are located in fixed positions on the map. Unlike regular dungeons, which are semi-randomly spawned throughout the map. And the way to explain it is that a dungeon can appear, and then it closes, and then another one appears. That's, that's what we mean by semi-randomly, because they are still in fixed positions, they just don't appear at the same time. Number 46. Pals also come in Lucky Pals, which are similar to shiny versions in Pokemon. Similar to Alphas, Lucky Pals are larger in size, but they emit a sparkling sound and an aura. Unfortunately, unlike Pokemon, these special audio and visual effects are immediately gone upon catching Lucky Pals. But who knows, maybe that'll change in the future since this is early access. Number 47. Unlike Alpha Pals, Lucky Pals have a Lucky Passive skill, which grants them increased attack and work speed. They also have random active skills that their Spearies don't typically learn. Number 40. In Pokemon, fans have to point out the dark elements, such as death, ghosts, eating Pokemon, etc. In PAL world, it's displayed up front. One example of this is the Meat Cleaver. While the Meat Cleaver can be used as a weapon against enemy PALs and humans, it also gives players the ability to slaughter their captured PALs for resources. Number 49. Choosing to slaughter Alpha PALs gives you the chance at jewelry and schematics. Slaughtering humans can give PAL spheres, ammo, and gold coins. And yes, I said humans, because, number 50, while Pokeballs can't capture humans, PAL World's PAL Spheres don't have that restriction. While aiming the PAL Spheres at human NPCs don't show a capture rate, once you throw it, the Sphere will attempt to capture the human. And once successfully captured, your human NPCs act basically like PALs. You can use them to work, you can use them to battle, you can slaughter them. Number 51. One of the fastest ways to gain cash in PAL world is by selling your PALs to merchants. Number 52. Going to a black marketeer, however, allows players to sell off their PAL sphere captured humans. Yes, PAL merchants won't buy them, but the black marketeers will. Because in the game, it's illegal. <laughs> like, in the game, you can't slaughter. I guess you can't do human trafficking either. I don't know, PAL world, different world. Number 53, a fun little detail is that PAL spheres have a bit of physics implemented. When you throw a sphere, it actually bounces off walls and rolls and can still capture a PAL even if it doesn't hit it right away. You can do like some sick bank shots with the PAL sphere. If y'all can link to some sick PAL captures down below, much appreciated. Number 54, speaking of PAL spheres, Redditor BLK Monte stumbled upon a trick where you can climb on a PAL sphere while it's capturing a PAL. Additionally, by doing so, when a PAL is successfully captured, you get sent flying into the air. And I mean flying into the air. But you have to make sure you bring your glider because you get sent so far up that you might actually just die falling down. So uh, don't forget your glider to safely land. Number 55. PAL world takes place on the Palpagos Islands, like I mentioned before, an archipelago divided into several different regions with different biomes to explore. Number 56. The biomes in the game are are grass, forest, desert, volcano, and snow. Each biome can have different temperatures, which can change over the course of the day. For example, desert biomes are generally hot during the day, but can cool off during the night. Number 57. Temperature can play a part within the game, similar to Breath of the Wild. Not only does the temperature affect the player character, with the character having to wear different types of clothing to combat the temp changes, it can also affect certain tasks, such as egg incubation, where, if not at the ideal temperature, the tasks take longer than it normally would. Number 58. The name Palpago Island is more likely than not a reference to the real-life Galapagos Islands, which are important as it was where Charles Darwin observed and developed his theory of evolution through natural selection. Number 59. According to the in-game lore, the Palpagos Islands are hidden under a thick fog. A castaway stumbled upon it when looking into a particular part of the world map that seemed quote-unquote empty. He became stranded, so he started to explore the Palpagos Islands and started journaling his observations. Number 60. The Palpagos Islands has a large tree referred to as the World Tree, which is so large that fog shouldn't be able to hide its location. So the castaway speculates that there's something else that might be hiding the islands from the rest of the world. Number 61. The Palpagos Islands have regional factions, each with their own goals and rule over territories around the Palpagos Islands. These factions are also in control of towers, of which their leaders have made home. What those towers do, we don't know yet because it's still in early access. Number 62. The faction you most likely encounter first when playing PAL World is the Rain Syndicate, led by their leader Zoe Rain alongside her pal Grisbolt. They are a criminal faction known for PAL poaching. Number 63. The Rain Syndicate members include the Thug, Hunter, Cleaner, Grenadier, Crusher, Gunner, and Elite. 
Each type carries a different weapon, ranging from bats and handguns to flamethrowers. Number 64. The Castaway believes that the Rain Syndicate are descendants of the ancient civilization of the Papagos Islands. Number 65. Lily Everhart, alongside her pal, Laleen, is the founder and leader of this next faction, the Free Pal Alliance. They are against the exploitation of pals, protecting them whenever they can. Except, when, when I first encountered them, they were shooting some pals. So, immediately red flag. Number 66. The Rain Syndicate and the Free Pal Alliance are enemies. However, according to Zoe Rain's diary entry, nobody seems to know the real reason why they always fight. Other than they've been fighting for so long that there seems to be no hope of them getting along. But, I think we all know why. The Rain Syndicate poaches and the Free Pal Alliance don't want that. Number 67. The Free Pal Alliance currently has only one type of enemy. The Free Pal Alliance Devout. They are usually in smaller groups, similar the Rain Syndicate thugs, and have crossbows. Number 68. The next faction we have is the PIDF, or the Palpagos Islands Defense Force, led by Officer Marcus Dryden, along with his pal, Phalaris. These corrupt officers will chase you down if you commit a crime, and especially if you're low level, will overwhelm you since they spawn in batches of five. This was actually the second faction I encountered because I committed a crime pretty early on, which means I, uh, I attacked a person because I wanted to try to capture him because I heard you can capture them with pal spheres. Did anyone anyone else have this experience where you you were just experimenting and then suddenly the cops came? <laughs> like, I, I didn't even know there were cops in this game. Anyway, number 69. The Free Pal Alliance and the PIDF are in cooperation with each other, with the Free Pal Alliance paying a hefty price for the PIDF to assist them to protect pals from poaching. Number 70. Next, we have the PAL Genetic Research Unit, led by Commander Victor Ashford. This faction specializes in PAL research. Number 71. Because of the PAL research, Shadowbeak is an artificial PAL created by the leader of the PAL Genetic Research Unit. Number 72. Lastly, we have the cult-like faction, the Brothers of the Eternal Pyre, led by Soul Reader Axel Travers and his PAL, Orserk. Number 73. Similar to the Free PAL Alliance, there is only one type of enemy you can encounter, the Martyr, which use flamethrowers. Number 74. Remember that flying whale-like PAL in earlier trailers? While the PAL itself isn't present in the game, parts of it are. Scattered throughout the map are skeletons belonging to the gigantic creatures. One of the most complete examples can be found in the Astral Mountains, and it looks extremely similar to the whale-like PAL we see in the trailer. Number 75. Another set of bones can be found in the Astral Mountains, this one being similar to the snake-like PAL from the same trailer as the whale. What could this mean? Are they part of the story? Were they cut because they just became skellies? Guess we'll find out in future updates. Number 76. Outside of being Pokemon with guns, Pal World, being a survival game, has a form of base building, a feature you'll find in a lot of games in the survival genre. But unlike a lot of those games, you're not alone. And I mean that in a single player sense, you are not alone. Your pals can help around the base, defending it, gathering resources, amongst other tasks. Number 77. CEO Mizobe states that an example of a game with a similar mechanic, which is partners helping you out with building your base, was Sons of the Four. Forest. Number 78. Pals can either work in comfort or crumble under the terrible working conditions. The game allows both. You can either build hot springs and pet your pals to make them feel better, or just work them to the bone until they start receiving ailments. This was actually built into the game, <laughs> and Mizobe says that, you know, you're free to do it. Number 79. If there are parts of your base that are on fire due to a raid or because of pals, your water type pals will automatically put it out. Likewise, if there are any torches in your base, your fire type pal will light them up. These little automations make these pals feel truly helpful to your base building dreams. And Mizobe states that Pal World was a game built around automation. Number 80. A little tip, if you want to level up quickly, don't forget that capturing the first 10 of each pal grants you an XP boost. You may notice that one of the first tasks you get in the tutorial are to capture several lamb balls. This is to guide you towards doing this for other pals as well to get this bonus. Number 81. Now that you're leveled up, you want to level up your low-level pals as fast as possible? It's easy. You got it. It's actually pretty easy. You have to put that pal in the party, find some high-level monsters, and your pal should level up just for being in the party. It's kind of similar to XP share from Pokemon. Number 82. Food in the game spoils, and there is a timer for it. But what if your food is spoiling too quickly? Well, you can put that food in your cooler box, or you can put it in a feed box, then put it back into your inventory. This resets the spoil timer, and it's an easy little trick to work around the system. Number 83. If you find a nice tall mountain and you decide to make a base up there, chances are you might be completely safe from raids. 
NPCs have to find a path to your base for raids, and mountains make the pathfinding take very long to the point where they just drop the raid attempt. Number 84. While the Plateau of Beginning is the first spawn point you encounter when you first launch the game, there are other spawn points you can choose from with later playthroughs. Number 85. The PAL deck is the Pokedex of the PAL world, and it contains information about each PAL you encounter, including habitat range, which allows you to see where you can find these PALs. Number 86. As of version 0.1.5.1, there are 137 PALs in the game, which includes subspecies. Number 87. Several PALs received their official names from community suggestions through an event called Name This PAL, which took place on the Pocket Pair Discord. These names are Sparkit, Joltog, Tfent, Depresso, Mao, Gobfin, Incineram, Univolt, Foxicle, Lunaris, Ragnahawk, Kelpsy, Wumpo, Quivern, Menesting, Jormantide, and Frostallion. Number 88. Pocket Pair releases PAL-specific videos on their YouTube channel, so if you want insight, you can check them out but the PAL deck number indicated on each video doesn't reflect the number in-game. It's simply just for promotional use. Number 89. PAL number 001 is Lamb Ball. It's considered one of the weakest PALs alongside PAL number 003, Chicopee, whose PAL deck entry also says that both of them are the weakest. Number 90. Despite looking very similar, Pengullet and Penking are not related whatsoever. Since evolution doesn't exist in the game yet, these two are considered two very different species. Number 91. Similarly, Melpaca and Kingpaca aren't related either, but the latter's PAL deck entry states that Melpaca serves it. Begs the question, are they actually not related? This is not a fact, but it is my theory. Similar to the Galapagos Islands and the theory of natural selection, different species evolved to become vastly different from one another. So Melpaca and Kingpaca are technically part of the same species, they're just differently evolved. That's my theory. I don't know if it's going to be real. Whatever. Maybe I messed up the theory of natural selection. Who knows? Anyway, number 92. Hang Yu, pal number 032, was used in execution where they would rip off the skin of serious criminals. Not me thinking they were going to use them in public hangings because the pal's name is literally Hang You. I didn't know they were going to rip off the skin. That is, that is the biggest... <laughs> <laughs> that is the biggest bait and switch ever. Number 93. Pal number 069 is Lavender. That's it. That's the fact. No, I'm kidding. There's a little more to that fact. Originally, Lavender was supposed to be pal number 049, which can be seen in the promotional pal deck video on Pocket Pair's YouTube channel, but this was changed for very, very obvious reasons. Number 94. Lavender's pal deck entry states that it seeks a night of love and that even humans have become a target. I'm telling you, if y'all thought Lopunny and Salazzle were questionable, Lovender takes that to a whole new level. This is canonical. This is like not even like Vaporeon meme level. This is canonical. Number 95. Lovender has a 30% chance of spawning as male and a 70% chance of spawning as female, which is the opposite of the other pals in the game. Number 96. There are four legendary pals scattered throughout the map, all featuring the legend trait, which gives them stat boosts all around. These pals are Palladius, Necromus, Frostallion, and Jet Dragon. Each can be found roaming the land with a max level of 50. Number 97. Jet Dragon is considered the fastest flying pal in the entire game. Number 98. As of version 0.1.5.1, there are some pals that are in the game code but aren't available in the game itself through normal means. The first we'll talk about is Dark Mutant, which is what the fandom calls the missing pal, N-Text. Dark Mutant's design looks to be inspired by Mega Mewtwo Y, albeit with a different color scheme. Number 99. Some fans speculate that Dark Mutant might be connected to another pal, Lunaris. However, this is unconfirmed and pure speculation. What's interesting is Dark Mutant's PAL deck entry, which says that it has a beam that can tear holes into other dimensions, and that, quote, it's even believed that certain species of PALs were born from such phenomena. Could this be the PAL world equivalent to Ultra Beasts? Number 100. Boltmane is another missing PAL, and it's an electric type that can be ridden using a saddle. It even has a PAL deck entry saying that the more it moves, the more it heats up, and the hair tips increasingly grow brighter. At its peak, it becomes so dazzling that you risk blindness if you stare at it directly. Number 101. Boltmane can be seen in early trailers for PAL World sporting a black and yellow color scheme, in line with it being an electric type, whereas the in-game model has a fiery flare. The reason why Boltmane was included in this early release version of the game is speculated to be because it shared a very similar model to Luxray from Pokemon. And people have overlapped them to the point where it's like almost one to one. Number 102. The last missing pal within the game's code is Dragastrophe, which is the portmanteau of Dragon and Catastrophe, the Lord of the Darkness. To me, Dragastrophe looks similar to Reshiram and Zekrom, the legendary Pokemon from Black and White. 
Number 103. So how did the game do after launch? While well, the game sold 19 million copies, became one of two games to reach 2 million concurrent players on Steam, and garnered over 300 million hours played in two weeks of release. Suffice to say, the game had become a huge success. Number 104. However, with success comes detractors, and one of PAL World's major selling points for people, it being Pokemon with guns, was also a big point of contention among others. PAL World's PALs were accused of being straight ripoffs of already existing Pokemon. Some examples are Anubis being a Lucario clone, Ron Cherry being similar to Meganium, Premis bearing resemblance to Eevee, specifically its Gigantamax form, and Verdash being a grass type Cinderace. I'm not gonna say anything, so it's up to y'all to decide how much of these are are inspiration and how much are plagiarism. Number 105. There have even been death threats against Pocket Pair employees following the game's release. CEO Takuro Mizobe tweeted out saying that currently we are receiving slanderous comments against our artists and we are seeing tweets that appear to be death threats. Pocket Pair's community manager Bucky revealed similar messages were being sent via Discord. Number 106. The Pokemon company officially responded to these claims saying that they intend to investigate and take appropriate measures if anything were to infringe on intellectual property rights related to the Pokemon. This statement was made on January 25th, 2024. And as of writing this, it is the end of March 2024. I don't know if they're still investigating or they've dropped it, but just saying, still hasn't happened yet. Number 107. On March 15th, 2024, Pocket Pair released update news. A new update will be coming soon, introducing raid battles. The first raid will be against the powerful and evil Bella Noir. And if we're still talking Pokemon lookalikes, this new pal kind of looks like a dark Gardevoir with a similar name to match. And with that, we have 107 facts about Pal World. There's definitely more to discover in this game, and we all have to remember that it's still in early access, so new features and pals are sure to come. But that's all for this video. If you liked it, like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when we upload next. This has been The Leaderboard, your home for video game facts. See you next time.